Welcome to Court Kind Save for January 18th, 2020. This is a show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening right now, and with it being Saturday, we look back at some of the biggest stories from the weeks past. Now, if you want to learn more about these stories, because this is my opinion, check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link to each story there so you can read about them for yourself and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Really appreciate it because it uh, lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here, which is a huge help. Hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV to watch the shows you enjoy. Well, last week I didn't really get a chance to do a review. I was flying back from CES, so we did kind of a different video where I showed off all the things we saw at the show floor. So today, some of the stories are from this week and some are gonna be from CES, but I wanted to take a moment, answer your questions, kind of break down some of the things I've heard from the readers and viewers here that wanted to know more about a particular topic. So hang in here with me as we review stories from kind of the last two weeks or so. All right, let's get into it with Congress and the President signing a new bill that bans hidden fees on cable TVs and charging you for routers you don't actually use. Right now, some cable companies, even if you use a modem or router that you buy yourself, you still have to pay them um, for that. Now, under this new law, um, companies are required, A, to fully disclose all fees and taxes, we talked about that earlier, but to also um, not be able to charge you for modems and routers you don't actually use. Now, a lot of people ask when this is going to affect. It's in law now. It's been signed by the president, passed by the Senate, passed by the House, but there's a six month period for the FCC to kind of create the rules, notify everybody. Very common with new laws that when the law comes in effect, it's like, okay, we passed the law, smoking age is changing, changing drinking age is changing, whatever it may be. It's in law now, but doesn't take effect until this date. That way everybody gets notified. There's time to change everything to set up for the new law. So it's law, but not quite yet. So keep that in mind. But yes, yeah, going forward, even one of the biggest areas I think this comes into play is when people would call in for a new cable or new satellite service and they'll talk on the phone and the phone agent won't fully disclose all the fees and taxes. That's the biggest one I hear. But they're going to be required to fully, fully disclose and not hidden, not small, not in the fine print, but upfront tell you here is what your full price is with all this. And if you don't actually use the device, they can't charge you for it. So be interesting. Let me know if you have any questions or comments on that. T-Mobile is looking for a home internet tester. So T-Mobile is testing out a new home internet service, currently an L LTE, but they're building it out for their 5G network that's being rolled out right now. A lot of people ask, how do you get in on this to be a T-Mobile beta tester? You have to be a T-Mobile wireless customer. The internet service is $50 a month with no data cap, which is really nice. And to do that, in the post down in the show notes, I have a link to everything you need to the T-Mobile site where you can register to kind of get in line. They're limited in this test right now. As it's on the LTE, they don't want to overwhelm the LTE networks, but this is being built in preparation for them to test out the hardware, test out the billing, test out the management systems as they prepare to roll out the uh, 5G home internet service, hopefully coming this year. And one of the things they're trying to do first, it seems like, is complete this merger with Sprint. When that happens, I would expect this to open up a lot faster. But good news, T-Mobile, data cap free, wireless home internet options, is looking for beta testers. Link in the show notes down below if you want to learn more. AT&T TV now is rolling out a new DVR. One thing here, at the time I wrote this story the first time, their website still said that after 30 days, they would automatically delete recordings. They have since updated their, their FAQ section to say, now, if you have the 500 hours of DVR service, you get to keep those recordings for 90 days, and then the 90 days will automatically de delete. But if you have a plus or max plan, you can get you get now 500 hours of DR storage and a third stream for free with AT&T TV now. Now, they did just have that price like 60 some bucks or 80 bucks, I believe, for the max package. If I am remembering the pricing right off the top of my head, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, but 500 hours, it's not a bad option. A lot of people are like, well, I get unlimited storage with this service or that service. I don't know, 500 hours to me seems like a lot. So I'd love to hear from you. Do you think you could use more than 500 hours of DVR content? To me, I'm like, how would I ever watch that? 
I, I don't know, in 90 days, I don't know if I could watch 500 hours worth of content. But what I do like about it is it does um, allow you to manage a little bit of your recordings. I kind of wish at t would do the sling thing where sling, you get 20 hours, but you can have it forever if you wanted. So that'd be really nice to see happen there. But nothing you need to do if you're a Plus or Max customer. Unfortunately, a lot of people are asking about grandfather customers. at t TV Now customers are no longer, or grandfather customers are not getting this deal. And at the time I'm recording this, they're not offering an add-on to add it. So even if you wanted to pay, you can't get the 500 hours of DVR. You're limited to 50, I believe it is. And if you wanted to go and um, uh, have a third stream, you have to pay five bucks a month to get that third stream if you're on the grandfathered plans. So let me know what you think of that. Did you get the 500 hours DVR? What do you think of it? Does it make you more likely to keep at t Does it make it you more likely to subscribe to at t TV now? I'd love to hear from you. All right, next story. YouTube TV taking over NFL Sunday ticket? There's rumors that YouTube TV is in talks to do it. And a lot of this was um, rumors caught fire again last weekend as the um, YouTube's uh, chief product officer, I'm probably butchering that job title, was spotted at the Packers game or the Minnesota Vikings San Francisco 49ers game. My brain's fried all of a second, I apologize with the commissioner of the NFL sitting in the booth next to each other, talking to each other, leading people to believe that YouTube is, as they have reportedly been interested in, trying to get the new NFL rights. NFL Sunday ticket expires not um, after the 2021-2022 NFL season, but talks to, for the new contracts for NFL Sunday ticket are up for uh, renewal right now. Not only is the NFL Sunday ticket coming up for renewal, but Thursday night NFL streaming, which Amazon's had the last few years, that contract has expired. Amazon's reportedly still looking to try to um, maintain those rights. But YouTube and others are reportedly interested in bidding on them also. So those rights are up for bidding. So we're gonna have to keep a close eye on this. But it does seem that the sale or the um, negotiation on these are active. We've heard reports for a while that early talks were in place. Now reports are that um, companies like Google and Amazon and more are fully bidding for this. The NFL has reportedly said they intend to go and maybe uh, they want to make this more friendly to core cutters and to everyone. So probably something like a direct TV NFL Sunday ticket deal is probably not happening. But they have hinted that maybe they won't make this an exclusive anymore where maybe Comcast can sell NFL Sunday ticket and YouTube and Amazon in the same way that um, HBO, for instance, is available on multiple different streaming services. So leave me a comment. Let me know who would you like to be the winner of the NFL Sunday ticket and the Thursday night football, like Amazon, Google, somebody else? Leave me a comment, let me know. All right, SpaceX is um, closer to reality for home internet. This happened a little while while we were at CES, but SpaceX launched additional satellites. They now have over 100 and, or they have 180 satellites in space to build out their high-speed internet from low Earth orbit. I got a lot of questions about, okay, SpaceX is building satellite internet. How is that different from currently satellite internet? Current satellite internet is very high up at geostationary orbit, which is one satellite way up over North America covering all of North America, or a couple satellites to be honest, but just easy explanation. Low Earth orbit satellites from like Amazon and SpaceX are far for so here if that one's up here we're talking like way down here far lower is these new satellites there's a network of them with them being so much lower with a network of them they'll be able to offer faster bandwidth lower latency and more capacity we'll see how this all plays out spacex says they plan to have their internet service available later this year no pricing has been made announced other than that they intend to keep it cheap but we'll keep a close eye on this. It looks like they're gonna be very aggressive in this. And as soon as we know anything more, we'll let you know. But a lot of people ask, well, how is this different? It's a totally different system, far lower, far different technology that should offer far better speeds and performance from SpaceX's um, internet service. So keep that in mind. All right, last story, uh, excuse me, second to last story up of the day. TiVo's new streaming player is aiming to take on Roku Fire TV and more. Uh, so TiVo is releasing an Android TV powered device that runs the TiVo user interface. It includes the ability to have multiple devices um, 
combined into a single, um, or multiple streaming services combined into a single user interface where you'd be able to stream everything combined right there. Now, it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out, but TiVo hasn't announced a release date for this. Now, they did announce a price point of under $50, $49.99. For 4K Dolby Vision HDR Android TV device, this could be one of the best, cheapest versions of Android TV out there. But everybody asking for a price point or a release date, I don't know right now. But as soon as we know, we'll post over at corecarsnews.com. And keep a close eye on this. You know, TiVo coming into the streaming world could bring some competition. The question is, is it too late? And I'd love to know, are they just too late to the party to compete with, you know, the Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and more? So let me uh, know. Uh, last story up the day, AT&T is betting big on AT&T TV, but lack of Roku support may kill it. So right now, the AT&T TV app is not supported on new Roku devices. This raises a lot of questions, like, I got it on my Roku. If you already had the AT&T TV app installed as of January 1st, 2020, you get to keep it. If you didn't, it's no longer available in the store at the time of this recording, and you can't install it. So that's what's happening. So that means as this new AT&T TV service rolls up nationwide, Roku support's not going to be there. So I hope that answers a lot of the questions there. Well, that's it for today. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Back to normal on Monday. Really appreciate everybody's support. It was great to talk to everybody at the Q&A this week. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the kind words. Hopefully we're helping you break free from the high cost of cable TV so you can still watch the shows you want. Now, real quick, if you ever have a tip, a deal you find, or anything, make sure to head over to cordcuttersnews.com. It's cordcuttersnews.com. Click on the Contact Us button. Let us know what you found. Try to be as detailed as possible. As many notes and details on it as possible really help us because it allows us to quickly find what you're talking about so we can write a post about it. So keep those tips coming. Without you, what we do wouldn't be possible. So thank you to everybody for your support. I'll be back here on Monday. Take care, everybody.